Welcome to Welcome Home Doggy, a show that works to create a better quality of life for all dogs. I'm your host, Ariana Lasha, and today's guest, Leslie Lowe, is a landscape architect who designs dog parks. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, Leslie. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning. It's, well, I guess this afternoon where you guys are. Montana, it's still morning, bright and sunny. I love your um, whitefish Montana background. It really matches bringing it home right there. A fishing day. It's a day on the water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've ever even met an architect in real life, and I know we haven't had one on the show. So we're ready to find out all about how you design your dog parks. Sounds great. Yes, ma'am. So go ahead and start by telling us how did you get started as an architect and designing dog parks? I actually, I actually uh, started in, in theater working in design and I did worked on films and at the same time I loved the outdoors so I was always outside. I always knew my native plants. Had, had uh, gone to school some in forestry so at one point I decided to go back to grad school and I picked landscape architecture and environmental planning. And it was, it was a perfect fit. It was everything I loved about design uh, as well as the outdoors. And I always had dogs, have, have trained dogs. Um, we hunt with our dogs. So we're always outside seeing how the dogs relate. And one of my projects in grad school was doing a dog park. So that was pretty exciting. and. Of course, it, it didn't go anywhere, but um, shortly after that, I uh, finished school and started working in Whitefish, Montana, and became involved with a local dog park. Um, they were, you know, they, like all dog parks, it's a real struggle to get them off the ground. And part of that is, is getting support from your municipality or, you know, city, state, uh, county. Uh, and the second thing is having a really good support network. And so I think that probably the most successful way is having a really strong group of volunteers. And the volunteers, you know, often if they come up with a design and, and then go to the city or whatever and say, hey, we really want to build a dog park. You know, we're working with landscape architect. Uh, we, we've got great ideas. We'd like to be involved in the maintenance and taking care of it and take ownership of this park. Will you work with us? And I think that partnership is probably the key to getting a dog park functioning well and up and running. And, and it's a long process. Most of my dog parks have taken about six years from the time of the idea to coming up with the design to actually opening the park. And, and that's probably phasing the park. Wow. So you said it takes six years from design to actual conception of the park. You said it takes long to get these parks up and off the ground. Why is it so challenging to design and actually implement a dog park? I, th I think it's because my idea of a dog park is not just put up a fence and call it a dog park. I think that's what gives dog parks bad reputation because there's nothing to interest the dogs. There's nothing to keep the, the dogs motivated and exploring and discovering as well as the socialization factor. So if we just put up a fence, it's pretty easy to get everybody on board. But if we actually design a good dog park, from the time of, of finding the right piece of property, um, talking to whoever owns that property, whether it's private or the city or, or parks, you know, parks and recreation might be part of involved in that, um, to developing a strong group of, of volunteers that want to be on a board of directors. And, and really that board of directors is going to not only guide the the design stage of the park uh, and, and provide ideas, provide um, co context for the local area, uh, but they're also fundraising. 
And so if, if I was a, a volunteer board and I came up to the city and said, we've got $100,000 in the bank to start on a dog park. This is how we, this is our design. This is how we'd like to phase it. This is, what can you do to help us? Then I think that, that there's a sense of ownership there and credibility. And then the city or the county, whoever it is, is going to go, wow, these guys are serious. They're just not expecting us to do all the work. They actually want to see this happen. And I think that's, to me, that's why it takes so long. And half of that is because getting a great board of directors seems to be the challenge. Mm. And also having mm. somebody like on Parks and Recreation that is excited about the project, whether it's the county or the city, right? Now that I liked what you said at the beginning, basically a Leslie Lowe dog park design is set above the competition. It's more than a field and a fence. You're gonna make sure that it's something that everybody in the community can benefit from. One of the things that I like to make sure I do is that uh, I think disabilities is a really key part of our world. And uh, it's not designing a park with an afterthought of adding a few elements that are for, for disability. I believe that you design that right into the park from the start. And, and why? There's tons of veterans that have dogs. There's people in wheelchair. The, there's senior citizens with walkers that want to be involved, who want to walk through. It could be moms with strollers. And so to me, whether it's having a, for us in Montana, it's a paved asphalt trail because we're not so worried about the heat context. Um, in some places, probably that isn't the best surfaces, but something hard. Also having, you know, whether it's a pavilion for people to stand in under the, while it's raining or be able to have a meeting in there about the dog park. Uh, having all sorts of things for the dogs to do, whether it's, I call them obstacle courses, tunnels to go under, rocks to explore, you know, ponds to swim in, finding a whole variety of, of different textures, different shapes, different places to engage a dog. And I think when you keep a dog engaged, you have less problems. And it's even true with puppies, right? If, if my puppy is interested and excited about something and exploring something, then I have far less biting little annoying puppy, right? And I think you can take that through to, to larger dogs also. Yeah, and I love what you said about being inclusive because people of all walks and backgrounds of life all have dogs, so they should be able to enjoy those things just as much as everyone else, absolutely. So if absolutely. I, yeah, if I was excited about this and I wanted to implement a dog park in my community today, I said, hey, you know what, down the street, I want a dog park, I want Leslie Lowe to design it. How do I get started with that process? Well, I guess the first thing would be to contact me. And I have a website, beargrassla.com. And bear is the animal, grassla.com. Uh, and, and that's the first, first place. But, but it's more than that. It's also starting to research what you want for a dog park. And there's tons of university studies these days about dog park conflicts, about how we can minimize that. And so a lot of it's doing your homework because really the stats, even though people say we've got problems with all these dog parks. Well, I say the problem is in the design. And if we can give large enough areas, I like five acres for a dog park. I think it's big enough for dogs to be able to go off into an own area and avoid conflict if they want to not having corners, hard corners that, you know, trap to the dog, to having bullpen gates where they go in one way and they go out another, uh, trying to get people to stop meeting right at the gates, but move people into the park. I think those are all good uh, conflict avoiding techniques or minimum, I wouldn't say avoiding, but minimizing. And again, that's part of having that strong board. People that are there every day that know the dogs, 
know that know when there's going to be a behavior problem, being able to recognize that. And, and to me, getting that board together with fundraisers, with veterinarians, with um, trainers, you know, uh, marketing people, that's who you need on that board. Absolutely. But say we do do our homework and we've got a good plan and we've got a strong board, but the government still says, hmm, you know what, I don't think we need a dog park right here. Where do you go from there if they tell you no? Well, I guess I would start by designing a master plan, a plan of what your concept of the overall park is and being able to go to them and said, uh, you know, here's our information. This is how many dog owners are in the U.S. This is how many, you know, people are involved in, in our organization and the money that we've raised. And this is the kind of design we want to do. And, and a lot of times, so I think organizations are hesitant because the work hasn't been done before. So I think that overcomes a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's unfortunately waiting to the right person is in control of those positions. I've had um, a park and rec director in Whitefish that was quite opposed to it. And then we got a fantastic new park and rec director and it made the world a difference. That's when things really started to take off. So I would say that's uh, pretty consistent too. You, you want to form that partnership, strong partnership. Strong partnership, strong board, strong community, absolutely. So when you are making your designs for these dog parks, do you design them differently based off of breed and size or are those really factors when you're designing a park? I, I probably, I think it would have some relevance. If I was designing in an area uh, like Montana, where a lot of dogs are, are used to big open areas and, and uh, interesting obstacles, that's probably different than if I was designing for a very, very small urban area where a lot of dogs were, were tiny um, and, and having never explored those kinds of outdoor things. Now that's that's the nice, uh, I don't know, paradigm. That's the nice, interesting thing, right? How can I get an urban dog to start exploring some of these textures, some of those outdoor elements that they're not used to? Uh, I do have small areas for small dogs. I tend to call it special use areas because I think that they're often underutilized. And that means that I can use it for, maybe there's a dog obedience class that happens one week, one night a week, or an agility class. Uh, so if it's a big enough park, I can have an area that's already designed for hosting, say, AKC agility or obedience, and then large enough areas. But in a smaller dog park, maybe I just do have a smaller area that's for, for little dogs or shy dogs. And while we're talking about dogs and their sizes and this and that, have any of your dogs specifically um, influenced the way you design a park? Did you have your own babies in mind that are like, hmm, I think they like this, so I'm going to put that in there? Completely, completely. I mean, we take our dogs fishing, we take our dogs hiking, uh, they're bird dogs, so we do hunt with them. So they like long grass. They like going climbing over logs. They like going through tunnels. They like rocky surfaces. They love climbing on big boulders. They love exploring water. So I try to put those elements into my design for sure. They, they've never been in a splash park. I think that would be pretty different for them. Okay. Yeah, well, there's no doubt that it's made with a lot of love. And I'm sure they, they love it more than any other dog out there because they know what their mom likes. Like, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So I know we talked a little bit about, you know, from the start of a dog park to groundbreaking could take at least six years, maybe more. But do you know what, like the shortest amount of time it's taken you to design and actually implement a dog park? I would say four to, four to six years. Okay. I, so I can't. Average, so. Now, we've, we've been dealing with pretty big dog parks from six acres to um, 15 acres to I think 30 acres in Michigan. So uh, big variety of, and, and, and 
large areas. So I think if you were doing a small dog park, but you know, I'd be hesitant to do a dark dog park even under two and a half acres. Mm. Just because I think mm. the numbers of dogs that attend it create a problem. Yeah. And you said you've designed in Michigan, Montana, where else in the US, US can we find one of your dog parks? Uh, that's pretty it. Uh, Whitefish right now and Michigan uh, and a project in British Columbia. Uh, Michigan is just getting under started. They have the property, they've started the fence, we have a master plan. Whitefish has uh, been up and running for years and has been rated one of the top 10 dog parks in North America. So that's been exciting. Yeah, and I get inquiries all the time from all over the world. And, and sometimes they're just conversations of, hey, what, what do you do? What can you help us with? I think you should take it international for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I had somebody inquire about a dog park in Ireland. <laughs> really? I mean, any plans to see that come to fruition? Uh, you know, it's so up to the board of directors and whether they think they have that knowledge or or the local help to, to achieve what they want to dream. I just help them dream bigger. Well, look, hey, when you have one on every continent, <laughs> we want to be right there <laughs> to in the, all of the dog parks. Hey. You what, bet. What's your absolute favorite part of the job? Obviously, besides working for the dogs with them in mind, what's what's the best part of the job? Being with the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Being with the I dogs. I just like I like seeing happy dogs. I like seeing dogs exploring and using their nose and and uh, having a good time. Well, so I'm, that's that's kind of the bottom. I guess that's the main goal of my dog parks. But I also recognize that for people. And people of all ages, sides, shapes. Uh, so it also needs to be a park that people enjoy. Dogs and their people. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Leslie, for joining us today, giving us some insight into how long it actually takes to design a dog park and what you do in your job as an architect. So at Welcome Home Doggy, we just want to say thanks for being with us today. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on. Thank you. If you want to know more about today's guest and our show, be sure to visit our website. Remember to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm your host, Ariana Lasha, and this has been Welcome Home Doggy.